Nessa girl, let's just get into this episode of Love and Hip Hop Miami Season 3, Episode 2. Let me start out by saying Love and Hip Hop Miami seems to have finally gotten it right when it comes to being a true representation of the hip hop scene here in Miami. They made some subtractions, they made some additions, and what we have is a Love and Hip Hop season that seems to be more in line with the true pulse of the Miami streets. Now before we get into episode two, I wanna go back to episode one really quick, cause there's one thing I wanna know and the second thing I wanna laugh my ass at. I wanna know what in the hell has happened, what type of karma has Alvin put in the world that his ass on went from sitting on the sofa at the Love and Hip Hop reunion arguing with Bobby Lights to fucking fried chicken and fries down to the Sunday's eatery. No God, honey. Now I know they say we ain't supposed to laugh at people and they was laughing at young jock for driving the Uber and they said when people out here getting an honest living, y'all be out here laughing. But child, you went from being Trina assistant, best friend, her lover, and her secretary to being a line order cook down to the Sunday's eatery. I know they say work ain't honest but it pays the bills, but bitch, is it really paying the bills? And the second thing that I want to laugh at, and only because, you know, I just came off a funeral myself with my father, is when Joy came in there to talk to Trina on episode one and had all them damn funeral programs. Black people know they ass will hoard some damn funeral programs trying to get one for their co-worker, one for their boss, one for the neighbor. You supposed to get one funeral program. You should not be leaving a funeral home with two and three and four funeral programs, especially the color copies. Now, that junk was just hilarious to me, just a little black people humor. Nevertheless, let's get into episode two of season three of Love and Hip Hop. Uh, I almost said Atlanta, Miami. Love and Hip Hop, Miami, season two, episode two. Oh shit, season three, episode two opens up with Amara La Negra talking to her boyfriend who happened to be Shay's brother about the rumblings in the street that Julian has stolen $300,000 from Trina and has basically fucked over the church's money. Julian done fucked up the thing. Quiet as it's kept, people around Miami have been talking about Julian being a thief for a very long time and a very trusted source, somebody very close to the love and hip hop Miami family has shared with me that Julian has a bad reputation from Miami to New York for being a little dishonest and unscrupulous with the money. Now look, I don't make the news, I just report it. I don't know whether it's true nor false. I met Julian one time down to the Houstons in Aventura when I was having lunch with Jill Tracy, High 105's finest. We shook hands, exchanged phone numbers, and that's it. I ain't never shared breath with the man, so I can't comment on his character one way or another. I hope it ain't true, but I've been around enough to know Everybody ain't lying on your ass. You might not have stole 300,000, but you got the 150. Get that lady back her money. And I'm glad that we finally are beginning to see what was going on with Trina's album and why it had been snatched and didn't do good. And we are gonna talk about that as we get later on down to the thing. Everybody who watches Love and Hip Hop Miami, welcome Briscoe. I went to high school with the nigga. We used to call him British. His mama called him British. So I'ma call him British. Welcome Briscoe to the Love and Hip Hop Miami. Now, is it me? I thought only the punks in Atlanta and Marlo Hampton was doing the credit card and the check fraud. Briscoe got down to the TV and said his ass did three years in prison for doing the damn fraud. Briscoe, Briscoe, why you was doing the fraud? You was trying to be dressed? You wanted to wear Gucci and Prada and Dolce and Gabbana? You was trying to get you a rich white man like Marlo Hampton? No God, honey. Briscoe did say he was doing uh, fraudulent notes as well, and that did make sense. Now let me tell you something. I'm from Miami, the welfare capital of the world. The only kind of systematic fraud I knew the bitches was doing was Section 8 fraud and food stamp fraud. But Briscoe said he was going to take it up a level and put y'all on one and went to jail for three. Nevertheless, I like the fact that Miami artists who have truly been grinding out in this street seem to be getting the, uh, the airtime that they need, the airtime that they deserve, and just painting a true picture of what's going on on this hip hop scene in Miami, as I've now said for the fourth time on this video, getting redundant, I'm gonna try to stop. Nevertheless, welcome to the family. Um, and speaking of adding somebody, I'm not going to lie to y'all, as much as Prince annoyed my internal soul and put out my internal flame, I really miss Prince. He was nice to look at and he was corny in a kid brother type of way, which kind of made me chuckle. I wish Prince 
much success and I hope somehow or another that that bring him back around and maybe him and Bobby can start hanging out or something you know I was about to say something else but I'm trying to change over a new leaf turn over a new leaf and be a better person in 2020 so trick uh, Trina goes down to Trick's restaurant, quiet as it's kept. Somebody had called me and said she was really going down there looking for her shoes, that Alvin had her shoes, and she was trying to see if Alvin had no wore her shoes to work, or whatever the case may be, and he wasn't there, so she decided to sit down and eat some poke chops and fries. Matter of fact, when I get off this video, I'm probably going to kill my ass down. Nah, child, that shit in Care City. I'm on the beach. But I could use a frap. I might go to Publix and buy me some poke chops. How about that? Um... Said that she had went down there and sat down with Trick. And I will say this. As much as Trick and Trina fuss, fight, and bicker, you can tell that there is a genuine love and brotherly sisterly bond between the two of those. Now, you know, it is unfortunate because for such a large part of Trina's career, I'm not going to say much of her success has been predicated on her relationship with Trick, but a lot of her... the big jumps that she gets in her career. He initially co-signed her. They are, they are almost like a package deal. And what sucks about it is Trick just got this cocaine DUI situation going on down here in Miami after only one week of being on the radio with the Trick and Trina morning show. And I know Trina got to be somewhere like, damn bitch, here it is, you fucked up the album. Now we don't got a second opportunity and you finding a way to fuck up this. I know Trina ass down in Lil Haiti, paying the Lil Haitians ladies to do, put a damn, put a root on Trick ass and put a root on the damn career to make his ass a zombie and either act right or leave her the fuck alone and detach her money and stuff from her cosmically, universally, and spiritually so she can fly, 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 fly above. Now, I called a few people around Miami to find out if Trick still had a job down the Cox Media, and as of now, they said Trick has been suspended. So, praise the Lord for a BMW, a black man working, and hopefully after the suspension, his ass will still continue to work, and we can move forward with the Trick and Trina Morning Show, and Trick can stop getting DUIs and getting charges and, and caught in the law for cocaine possession this is number three trick he, i know he don't got down to the breakfast club and said that weed laced with coke it helped him with his lupus but when i went to florida state university and got my degree in economics when people ain't teach me nothing in, in medical but bitch other than pain relief okay i didn't know that the coca plant mixed with marijuana was good for anything else um so trick i'm gonna need you to stop playing a lover a secretary and a doctor on TV and go down to the doctor. Take your ass down to Jackson North and let them people see about you and put you on the right pill regimen that will not make you sick and not have you married to so many damn pills. Them people know what they doing. Them people know what they doing. Cause right now, Trick, it really look like you need to go to dialysis. It really do. It look like you are retaining a lot of waste and while you made a post on Facebook about people laughing about your parents while you just worrying about waking up tomorrow, yeah, you should be if your body is containing all that waste and you are, uh, 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 you know, bloated and whatnot. You don't look healthy. And I'm sorry, by no stretch of the imagination has cocaine and weed combined with alcohol ever been good for anybody's health. And that's just true tea. Moving right along, Trina decides to hold auditions for this all girls tour. Now, is it me? Or I'm just a little baffled, and I know that new artists have got to get an opportunity to shine, and a lot of times local places do a new artist showcase, but I'm sorry, when you say tour, bouncing around from city to city, I don't know nobody who want to pay their damn money to hear a bunch of random bitches they ain't never seen or heard before. I'm going to need a bitch to have one or two songs on the internet, one playing on the radio, two playing on Twitter, one on the Spotify, and a half a snippet on Snapchat. I am sorry. And believe it or not, that talent pool that Trina had down to that audition, they were absolutely horrible I did what hated it now everybody has been going up for Sookie now listen I don't know Sookie personally I have never heard of Sookie I'm 36 years old and maybe I'm aged out of Sookie Sookie got on stage me personally I did not like it I didn't like what she gave um, I just didn't like it and listen don't take it personal. I'm not saying she's bad. I'm not saying she can't rap. I just said I can't like it. And I think it has more to do with the fact that I'm closer to 40 than I am to 20. Sookie, you here now. We got to deal with you. Welcome, daughter. And hopefully, you know, she will show me a couple things that she like. Nikki Natural. 
Trent Daddy's girlfriend. Horrible! She was horrible. And you know what I cannot stand about hood girls, especially insecure hood girls, or insecure hood people, period. The moment you tap on one of their insecurities and they can't show up and do what they need to do, you know what I'm saying? And they get all in their bag. They want to fight and get ignorant. And that's exactly what Nikki did. That other girl, Jay, um, the other young lady who had on Jay something or another, forgive me, daughter, for forgetting your name. She was the best one. I loved her. She came there ready to work, ready to battle. And Nikki knew that she could not compete. So she's talking about, um, I, I, why am I not finna battle her? It's already done. I won the war. You must have won the, the, the damn war of, 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 of Lego building down to the daycare center, baby, because them bubblegum ass rhymes and raps that you was giving, it wasn't, it, it had no rhythm, it had no flow. You was making it up as you go. You didn't know you was looking like a hoe. See, look, look baby, I did that better than you. Now you could cha-cha-cha to this Mardi Gras. I could tell you right now, you ain't going that far because your rhymes was wacky and Trick got your back in. He need to let you go because you sound like you a dumb hoe. Hey, see, even I was ready. And I don't even do that. Train the people. Train the people. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't fucked up and discovered I got a whole nother talent. Train the people. You need to call me, Trina. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to uh, oh. focus, Quentin. Train the people. I'm ready to go on tour. Please call Tracy Christian at TCA Jail Route down to the Beverly Hills and negotiate my contract. And I'll be ready to perform. I will have all my wigs. I will have all my ghetto girl outfits. Um, and uh, I will have all my weave and my nails. And I will be very good on tour because um, I, 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 <laughs> I used to suck dick on the back of tour buses when I was a young girl, but don't judge me from my past. I don't live there no more, but I fit right on in with these girls. Okay, moving right along. I do think, well, I got to call Portia back. Uh um, I do think that Trina linking up with some of these young girls is really cute and can be cute. I just don't know who want to pay for it to see it. So Trick and Chaotic down to the studio, then Nikki Natural come down there, and I will say this. Let me just go ahead and say this. I don't like Nikki Natural. I don't like Nikki Natural, and Trick, I don't like you with her. First of all, Trick, your ass look like Harvey Weinstein, Bill Cosby, and Jeffrey Epstein rolled in one with your almost 50-year-old ass dating this 14-year-old girl. And you know what? Yeah, the girl may not be 14. She may be legal, but she got the mentality of a goddamn 14 year old the shit is just pathetic and Nikki for me and I don't know maybe it's just hitting on some of my childhood traumas but she is just the living embodiment and epitome of just a Miami ghetto broad if y'all want to know y'all ain't you don't know ghetto until you met a ghetto Miami chick now I don't know what's worse a ghetto Miami chick or a ghetto Atlanta chick. And the only reason why I say that is because Atlanta is ghetto mixed with country. It's like a double negative. But nevertheless, Nikki, you are ghetto and ignorant. And I think what annoys me the most is you are just immature as all fuck. And it's annoying. And you've got no grounds or no talent to even back up the level of obnoxiousness that you were given on our TV screen. The pink hair, just every, the pink hair, the braces. Like, mama, you can't be loud here, 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 here. I'm just all over the place. And you loud, strong, and wrong. Then you grab the mic out of Trina, had the people turn, the DJ, the, the DJ turned the stuff off. To call, calling folks bitches and stuff on the microphone. That situation escalated completely for no damn reason because you was insecure about your abilities to want to rap against that other girl. And that's the thing. I'm not trying to shade any true artist, but rap is the dumping ground for talentless people who want to be in entertainment. Singing hands down, you gotta be able to sing. Dancing hands down, you gotta be able to dance. But we have had so many foo-foo rappers become famous for being able to string together two nursery rhymes that now anybody who wanna be famous wanna rap. You don't have the chops, Nikki Natural, I'm sorry. 
it, 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 it won't work. Um, Trina meets with Amara down to the finger licking. Y'all gonna put finger licking ass on come hell or high water and I'm here for it. Get your paper, dog. Matter of fact, that's probably where I'm finna go when I leave and go get me some comp. Um, Trina meets with Amara and I love the way Amara came to her. Listen, you've always been a friend. I look up to you. You are inspiration. But Julian is my manager. Can you please tell me what's going on? And I love the way she worded it. She said, if you see as a friend, if you see a train about to hit me, please warn me. And Trina laid it out flat. I think he stole my money from me. My album is off the shelves. Now quiet as it's kept, Trina. And I love me some Trina. You've done a lot for the community. and You've done a lot for me as a young girl. Okay, when I was a young girl. Trina, this last album was not your best body of work. It wasn't. And I was about to crack a joke and say, child, it ain't on the damn shelves, but maybe it don't need to be. But I'm not going to say that because as an artist and as somebody who puts their heart, blood, sweat and tears into their creative endeavors, I know how that can feel. You know what I'm saying? When you've given something, you're supposed it all in the moment. But Trina, this album was not your best body of work. And I don't know, maybe it's because of what you were going through during this stage of life, but I really do feel like it actually is a blessing in disguise that this album is not on the shelves and that it gives us something more to anticipate moving forward on the next damn album. Sometimes you gotta ball that shit up like crumple homework, throw it in the garbage and start all over again. And I really do think why this did not feel good it's going to work out for your good. Um, Jocelyn is back in Miami. You know, they are, they are marketing a dog fuck out of this season of Love and Hip Hop Miami like it's just going to be the return of Jocelyn and like she's going to be one of the central characters on this season. I don't see it being that way. I think they got just enough of Jocelyn to be able to use her in the commercials. And I don't think we are going to get that love and hip hop Atlanta Jocelyn that we've come to love. Now, I love Jocelyn being on that boat talking about how she's matured and how Atlanta was toxic for her. And I love to see the evolution of the Jocelyn. But for those of y'all who think we're going to get all this Jocelyn Hernandez tease, I'm Jocelyn Hernandez, baby, from Seasons of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, do not hold your breath. Um, going back to why I like British, a.k.a. Briscoe, being added to Love & Hip Hop Miami, I love the fact that he is coming on, seizing the moment with an authentic storyline, which is he and his family. That episode, that scene British had with his son down the floor at a football camp was important because a lot of times we don't see um, black men from the hood healing families in a healthy way. A lot of times we see niggas getting released from jail or prison, stepping back in people's lives like, you know, like, blah, blah, you just supposed to take me. I can say British must have done a lot of soul searching and watching a lot of Eyanla fix my life when he was in prison because he came out, he apologized to his son the way he was supposed to apologize. He talked him through the situation. He reassured him, reaffirmed him, allowed the son to be upset about what it is he had to experience and the overwhelming emotions that he had to deal with watching his father be carted away and stripped from his life for three years. And he said all the things to validate that young man's feelings and to just make him feel safe and secure again in the relationship. Hats off to British for having the maturity, the intellect, the emotional intelligence to fortify that young man because it's going to carry him a very long way. And last but not least, Julian and Amara meet and it looked like Amara is coming out of the dark. Because she sit down and start to talk to Julian and she was like, listen, I hear what you are saying, but all these people can't be lying on you. And ain't that a fucked up situation to be in when you have, it's like your first line of duty is to listen to your friend or your family member, but your heart, your soul, your spirit is telling you, bitch, like you lying a little bit on the left hand side and you can see that Amara is not buying the bullshit. And she did what I do a lot of times when I don't want to be in the middle of, of bullshit. I tell people, fix it. She was like, Julian, I don't like this shit. Just fix it. And with that being said, it looks like when they give us the flashback of for, uh, episode three, it looked like he going to attempt to fix it, but ain't shit going to get fixed. Nevertheless, y'all, that's Love & Hip Hop Miami. Drop down in the comments and let me know what y'all think. Better yet, let them know what y'all think. And I'll call you later. Be sure to like and subscribe.
Bam!